Hello dear learners. Welcome to today's presentation. The title of this presentation is Unit 1, William Blake, Holy Thursday, Text and Explanation of the Poem. The name of the course is General English of the BA English Program, Semester 1. I welcome you to this presentation dear learner friends. Here is the table of contents, learning objectives, followed by the text of the poem, context of the poem, explanation of the poem, all have been highlighted in this particular presentation, followed by the questions to check your progress and the reference. Learning Objectives After going through the second video on Unit 1, the learner will be able to briefly explain the context of the poem by William Blake, Holy Thursday, and also explain the text of the poem, Holy Thursday. I shall move on to the context of the poem. The title of the poem Holy Thursday refers to the celebration of Holy Thursday, which is a special day in the Christian calendar. It is also referred to as Maundy or Copeland Thursday. In England, the celebration of Holy Thursday is known as Royal Maundy. As the celebration of this special occasion falls on Thursday before Easter Sunday, when the Catholic churches conduct worship services, it is also known as Holy Thursday. Easter Sunday is celebrated to mark the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who according to the New Testament arose from death on the third day after his uh, crucifixion. So, we shall come to the explanation of the poem. If you read the text of the poem, you will find that the opening lines of the poem captures the innocent faces of little children of the charity schools in England who stand in disciplined rows dressed in red, blue and green to celebrate Holy Thursday at St. Paul's Cathedral. The learner can imagine the elderly beetle, or in other words, the ceremonial officers of the church marching their way to attend their children's service at St. Paul's Cathedral. The poet compares the little children moving in disciplined rows to the flowing river Thames and to the blossoming flowers of the season. Both the images suggest the purity and fragility, the vulnerability of these little children. The poet almost exalts them as he would exalt the Lord in worship. Although the group of children prayed together at the service, yet there was only a gentle hum that rose from their lips. The thousands of little boys and girls with their radiating presence, like, like angels, had raised their hands in prayer in all their innocence, singing hymns, the songs, singing hymns dedicated to the Lord. Gradually, the intensity of their singing voices began to soar. That means their singing voices began to rise and sound like a heavenly or angelic choir. Now, what is a choir? Choir is a group of uh, singers or, uh, you know, a group singing hymns, particularly in church or particularly in relation to church music. The poet compares the strength of their singing to the gush of a mighty wind. Quote, a good mighty wind that is bound towards heaven. It reaches a crescendo, that means it reaches a peak because their voices are soaring. So it reaches a peak when their singing grows louder in their harmonious thundering. So it sounds like a harmony, it sounds like a thundering because now the intensity has grown. They bring to the mind the very image of little angels with radiating souls because they're so pure and innocent who look up to the Heavenly Father because they are orphan children. So for them, their father, their guardian, is their heavenly father. Such a sight would easily melt our hearts, wouldn't it? As they continue singing in the galleries, the poet directs our attention to the aged patrons and philanthropists of the charity schools. That means these are people who, you know, give charity to these uh, orphanages and to these charity schools, who pose as the who supposedly pose as the wise guardians. They pose themselves as the quote-unquote wise guardians. Though they may not necessarily be so. So they try to pretend or they, try, they seem pretentious as they pose as wise guardians of these poor children. The last line of the poem stands out as an appeal to the readers to quote unquote to cherish pity. What does it mean? To cherish pity. Or in other words, to be generous of heart and compassionate towards any child who stretches his or her, or her hand in need. The core message of the poem is that when little children call on for a little help or kindness, we must not turn them away from our doorsteps. The least that we can do is speak a, a kind word or be kind to these little children who may be poor, who may be going through a lot in life, who are orphaned or may look up to us for a little bit of love, a little bit of kindness, a little affection and attention in all their hope and innocence. So with this we come 
almost to the end of this particular presentation. But I shall again leave you with a few questions and especially to check your progress. Question number one. What is the significance of the celebration of Holy Thursday? Question number two. Where do the children visit a disciplined rose? Mention the reason of their visit. Question number three. What are the comparisons that a poet makes with regard to little children? Question number four. What should be our right approach to little children in need of help? And question number five. Give a brief explanation of the poem Holy Thursday in your own words. So you can pause it and you can read it and, you know, think up and write these answers at your own leisure. Here is the reference. You can refer to the graduate self-learning material of General English Block 1, Unit 1, Semester 1. And the references are as mentioned below. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you, dear learners.